All right, today we're going to talk about Stata programming. Uh, so this is obviously for people who already have some background in Stata, have written do files, uh, but would like to learn a few extra tips that, as I say, might make your life slightly less miserable. Uh, so I'm going to break this up into a few parts. The first part is going to be on macros. Uh, and you can think of these as variables that are not variables. So there are really two types of storage in Stata. So uh, at any given time, you have uh, both working memory and data. Now, data is, so if you have any familiar, familiarity with Stata, data is what you sort of work with before. These are the variables that show up, and each of them is kind of like, if you have a spreadsheet, um, and each column is a, or each row is an observation, then each column is a variable, right? Um, so Z, in this case, is a variable. And whereas working memory, you may not be familiar this even exists. Uh, so if you go to your command prompt to type macro dir, it'll show a list of all the, uh, the macros in working memory. And these are things that uh, store basically a single value. So if you do some calculation and you need that value later on, you can store it. So in this case, there's this tuning parameter macro that uh, is just a value that's kind of useful. Um, you can create these and sometimes in Stata create some of them as well. So most of these uh, macros here are actually created automatically by Stata. Now, those of you who have any background in programming other languages, say Python, Java, C++, whatever, so macros are actually a lot more similar to actual variables uh, or variables in actual programming languages, whereas what Stata calls variables are a lot more like, as I said, columns in a spreadsheet. So you can use these variables to store bits of info and later on recall it. Uh, so just to give you an example of this, so let's pull up Stata here. So I'm going to create a data set of fake data here. And so I have a bunch of variables. Um, I'll talk about each of these in turn. So a basic example is suppose I want to do this calculation here and I'm going to store it in what's called a local macro. So I'll talk about the distinction between local and global macros in just a moment. Uh, but suppose I have this, uh, this value and I want to store it in this macro here. Now, here's what's interesting. So basically, I'm storing the value here. I'm just basically saying I want to define a local macro. I'm going to call it result. And then whatever I put over here is going to be the contents of this thing. Now I'm going to display it. And in fact, it's going to basically just show uh, this calculation here, right? So what is 532? Um, so there are some interesting uh, peculiarities about uh, Stata in this case. So suppose I put quotes around this, for example. Um, oh, sorry. So let's suppose that when I displayed it, I put it put quotes around that. Then it actually displays this literally. So this is the distinction between a string and um, a float in Stata. So basically, this thing can be treated as either just literally this phrase, you know, this set of numbers with a slash and the set of numbers, or it can be treated as a mathematical operation. Um, but that's actually true anywhere. It's not just true of macros and global, but it's something to be aware of. You can actually, there's actually quite a bit of flexibility with these. Um, but anyways, what I want to talk about here, so this is basically just how you define a standard uh, local. Now, as I said, there are different types of macros. There are local macros and global macros. So local macros exist in different portions of a do file, and they don't exist outside where they're defined. So if you were to uh, define a program, then the locals you define in that program would only exist in that program. Um, if you have a script and you define a, a local inside that script or inside your do file, after the do file stops running, that local ceases to exist. It just vanishes. Um, and the reason for this is because Stata wants to avoid cluttering the memory and creating here. So if you, again, if you know anything about uh, variables in a normal programming language, the idea of scope is actually familiar to you. All programming languages have this concept. Uh, by contrast, global macros exist everywhere once they are defined. Um, so you define it once, either in a do file or at the command prompt. It'll be defined and will stay there until you either clear it or you close Stata. Um, so to give you an example of this, um, so let's come down here for a moment before I give you a practical example of the value of these. Um, so let's suppose we have a local uh, macro here, 
So I define this local called blah, I set it to be equal to the value of 10, and I display it. And so you see, it displays the 10. Now let's suppose I take this exact same command here and try to display it. I don't get anything. Um, so there are a couple things there. So basically this is the point that this local is not defined right now. So I can type in macro dir. There is no local called blah. Um, whereas if I I'll take this exact same code here, now it is defined here. And what's interesting is it's only defined in the command prompt. If I now run this piece of code here from inside the do file, I don't get anything because I haven't defined it inside the do file. I have to include all of this here to do that. On the other hand, if I define this as a global, um, I can display it here. Obviously, that's exactly the same as with the local. But I can also now type it at the command prompt, and it still appears. And if I type macro dir, I can see that the global I have defined is, um, is up here. So, so let's step back for a moment. Um, so I've introduced you to local and global macros. The way you define a local, um, as you can see here, is local and then the name. <laughs> you can type either equal or um, just have it like this, and it'll do much the same thing in this context. There's a subtle difference between the two of those, basically, which is uh, Stata will decide whether to treat whatever you have over here as a number or just as a string, depending on what you do over here. But in many contexts, it actually doesn't matter. Um, the key thing is, this is the name of the macro. Um, if you want to access what's inside of it, you have to basically put these little single quotes around it. So this thing here is actually um, uh, the thing. So this is not actually an apostrophe. This is uh, on your keyboard. It is uh, just to the left of the one key. Um, and then this here is a normal apostrophe. So you have to put those around the, the macro in order to access the value in there. If I type just this, Stata is going to throw an error because it doesn't know what this is. Whereas if you put these quotes around it, it uh, Stata will interpret it, just take that, this name blah, and replace it with whatever value is stored inside the macro. Um, by contrast, for globals, you uh, address them slightly differently. You put this uh, dollar sign here, and then uh, it's good practice to put curly braces around it. Uh, that's how you access a global macro. Now, what can you do with these macros? So up here, I have a little example where I'm running a regression. I have, I'm defining this left-hand side variable, and this right-hand side variable is z. And if I just run this regression, like just type the code, Basically, what's happening here is Stata is just taking whatever I defined as LHR, LHS bar, which is a Y. And since I put these little apostrophes around it, it's just taking whatever I put in there, which is a Y, and sticking it in here. Um, and the same for RHS bar. So I can actually put that into a command. So you're starting to see how this might be useful in that it's going to make your coding a lot more flexible. And it'll become really useful uh, in the next video when I talk about flow control. Um, you can also actually splice these macros into variable names, right? Because like I said, Stata is just going to take whatever you define here and stick it into uh, the place where you put this with no regard to what else is going on. So when Stata sees this command here, because we've put in a V name, we've defined it as an 8, it's just going to take this V name and stick an 8 in there for it. And so it's going to read this as sum K8. Um, and that's exactly what happens. We have a variable named k8, and it's going to summarize it. Now, if I were to take this and replace it with a 4, now I get k4, right? All right. So another interesting thing about macros uh, is that you can actually nest them. So like I said, uh, in a case like this here, um, Stata is just going to take this 4 and stick it in to the variable name here. Um, but you can do exactly the same thing with 
uh, with macros themselves. You can use macros to call other macros. Um, and this can be extraordinarily valuable. Um, so let's suppose I have a bunch of, I define a bunch of macros here. So var 1999, 2005, 2009. So basically different variables corresponding to different years, say. Um, and now I define another macro for the year. Now here's, so this, uh, it's gonna take you a moment to probably interpret this line, but so when I do this, let me just run it first and we summarize why here. So that's what ends up happening. Why is that? Well, how is Stata reading this? So let's, so in order to figure out how Stata reads macros, you have to start from the inside and work your way outwards. So the first thing we have here is year, right? So basically Stata is taking this block of code here and sticking in a 2005 for it, right? That's how Stata reads it. Now, step out one more step and we see this looks like var 2005. And that's the name of another macro, right? And its value is y. So now Stata is gonna replace this with a y. And so ultimately it reads this as some y. Nifty, eh? Um, all right, a couple more details about macros. So there are a bunch of extraordinarily valuable commands built into Stata that allow you to define macros. Uh, these are called macro assignment commands. So there are a lot of these and typically you run into them sort of by experience. Um, you can also ask me just in case there's a slim shot that whatever you're trying to do has a macro assignment command. Uh, but here are a couple examples. So one is if you have a sentence of some sort or a string with multiple chunks, this can either be a string with multiple chunks, a variable list, whatever, basically just any case where you have a bunch of characters with spaces in between. Uh, you can use this form here to actually get uh, a particular word out of that list. This is called a parsing command. Now, I have an example over here. Let's suppose I make this sentence, this list of words. So I'm defining a local macro called list of words, and it's going to contain the sentence here. And now suppose I want the fourth word of that sentence. I, would, uh, I could run this, and how does this evaluate? I get sentence. Why? Because this list of words is actually four words. The fourth word is sentence. And so Stata is reading this as give me the fourth word here, which is sentence. All right? The other extraordinarily valuable um, macro assignment command that I've come across is this format here. So we have a local, the name of the macro, colon, and then uh, var label. So this basically will read the label of a variable. So if you have a data set of variables and they're labeled, you can actually read the label of a variable into a macro. And that can be really useful if, um, for example, you're doing a collapse. The collapse command will take uh, ab like means, medians, or whatever. It will calculate summary statistics for a data set. When it does that, it actually erases the labels of all the variables. So uh, if you want to keep those, you can store them all as locals and then relabel later on. Um, or you might want to take a, a variable label and then say display it in the title of a figure, for example. Uh, and so the way you do this, as much as I showed you there, just have local, the name of the local, colon var label and label. So I have a variable here called labels with a very uh, creative variable label here. Um, so when I do this, I, so this command here will just get that variable label and display it, and we have that there indeed. Um, but the second command here you see will actually take the variable x and label it with that. So it's giving it the same variable label. And you can see over here, um, that is in fact what's happened now that I've run the command. All right. And that's it from macros. Uh, so in the next, uh, segment, I will talk about flow control, which is where uh, you'll discover just how valuable macros really can be.